Okay. And lurching behind it is uh, Lancia Flavia Sport. This is Zagato. just, uh, yeah, those rear side window takes a lot of people by surprise, I'd imagine. Yeah, and I mean, it's a love-hate um, shape for a lot of people. Well, welcome to a not-so-new Dave's Classic Garage Tours video. I'm at Historic and Vintage Restorations in Melbourne, and today we're going to take a tour with owner Paul amongst the Italian cars he has in for varying degrees of work. Apologies for the audio and some of the video. This was in fact my first ever shoot. Big lesson for any prospective YouTubers out there, get to know your equipment before you head out. Anyway, there's plenty of interesting cars to pique your interest and Paul himself is a wonderful tour guide. So let's go inside and check it out. We're moving into the Italian area and here we have um, a Maserati 3500 GT and uh, this again is a very unique car and has its own, uh, own particular story. It's chassis number 005 which means it was the fifth one built and the first of the first ten cars that the factory built as prototypes uh, and the first four of them were show cars uh, and um, then the later six cars were eventually put together and, and sold, sold to the public before they went into production. So this car was sold in 1957 and we think it was probably built in 56. Um, it took them a while in those days to sell things. But the other interesting thing is that it was bought from a bloke that lives in Victoria in Geelong and he was on holidays in Italy, saw the car had to have it and he bought it from the, one of the distributors over there and we're now finding out it had quite a history with this distributor who was a, a, a great uh, supporter of the Maserati factory and also uh, an amateur racer. So the car has probably got a lot more to tell us in, in terms of history. And where, where do you pick up the history as it goes along? It's amazing sometimes just through the chain of emails that you can pick up various things, names of people, see if they're still alive, um, see if you can find any history on them. Sometimes photographs pop up out of the blue, you get a photograph. So the owner's got a photograph of this car in London. The bloke must have gone to London and took a photograph. Well, that came out of the internet. So the, it, it's just a process of continually sort of chasing. But it's unusual because being an early car, it has drum brakes. It has a lot of features in it that were very similar to the sports racing cars that they were building in that same department. So, uh, and is the factory, uh, the Italian factories of the Exotico, are they, they good at keeping their paperwork? And no, they're terrible. We are trying to get the build documents on the car. Some cars they exist, some cars they don't. The ones that we've seen are actually handwritten. So someone scrawled it down and, and away they went. And in some cases, they never kept a record of the engine numbers. They had maybe a chassis number or, or, or that, but they, they weren't very good record keepers. And I think there were some very good reasons for that. Because cars disappeared and were sold off, <laughs> off the market and all the rest of it in those days. But this car is unusual as well. Um, it's a touring body car and all the components are numbered with the touring body number for the car, which has no relationship to the chassis number or the car number, which is separate numbers, or the engine number. So everyone had their own number. Gotcha, <laughs> the gotcha. Italians are like that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there are lots of signs of, um, of, you know, the workmanship in that period on the car, which we've, we've kept, and we're trying to restore it back to, um, oh, it'll be better than when it left the factory. Right. It'll be better. So welds, Italian welds and such. Oh yeah, yeah, there are plenty of those. You can see when you go around the car, you can see the welding. And um, Another unique feature is that uh, when they were trying to put the motor and gearbox in it, obviously there was a cross member that didn't quite fit. So just ha hammer out and belt it and, and it's in there. We've left it exactly the same as they left it. So that's all part of its, its history. And what's its future? Oh, well, it's interesting. The um, client that owns the car, um, it, it's been a, a long process, he's owned it for quite a while and, and is the third, third owner of the car which is amazing uh, uh, for a car of its age. 
So hopefully it'll be seen. It's going to be a driver, um, but it, you know, for, used for limited events and special occasions and displays and and be out and about. Right now, continuing the Italian theme, um, we have a little Lancia Fulvia HF 1.6. Um, we this car is 99% restored and has, a, again, a fascinating history. Lancia decided to build these especially for rallying, road rallying and for racing. So they um, originally came out with a 1300 engine, then this model they moved to a 1600 engine. Uh, and they're unique in lots of ways. One of them is that they're front wheel drive. The engine hangs out over the front gearbox in the back and they're a very na narrow angle V4 engine again which is an unusual design typical of Lancia. Uh, uniqueness about this car is this is one of the first hundred homologated specials built so they could compete in Europe under their the FIA conditions for rally cars. <laughs> Simo Lampinen still backing up the Lancia effort. Munari, soon to take over the lead, isn't talking. So we asked the man from Lancia why his cars were doing so well. Monty against such powerful cars like the Porsche. Well, we have always been quite quick. <laughs> yeah. Last year we won six special stages out of uh, 15. So that was not too bad. But of course we broke the car and so we were out of the game. But if we don't break the car, we're, we think we can always do not too bad. On the Turini again, it's Munari. By the rally's end at breakfast time next morning, only 24 cars had finished the course. But the biggest cheer of all, almost a riot, is for winner Munari. Outside the Royal Palace, the prize giving with Prince Rainier and Princess Grace to give the rally their official accolade. For Lancia, this is their greatest moment, with Munari first, Lampinen fourth, and Barbezio sixth. And for Munari and navigator Mario Manucci, the peak of their long rally career. Uh, so they were made with uh, an aluminium bonnet, doors and boot and also um, very lightweight steel construction. And um, they came in several guises, you could order them, and this one's got what you would call a, uh, a rally tune engine in it, which is probably about 130, 40 horsepower instead of the standard 115. And the other interesting thing about this car, it was purchased by an Australian-based Italian couple and he decided that this is what he wanted to buy. He went to Italy and he bought it from a dealer in Rome. And he, we had a letter from his wife. He's now incapacitated and can't tell us anything, unfortunately. But the wife wrote a letter describing going and picking the car up and, and um, how delighted they were with the car. 
and they toured around Italy in it and then they brought it back to Australia. And again, it's only had the current owner, I think he's the one, two, yeah, I think he's the fourth owner of the car. So we've got it documented pretty well yeah. from new. And the, uh, the engine hanging over the front of the wheels, is that uh, yeah, that's that's over any understeer at all? Or? Well, no, they're very balanced yeah. to drive and uh, they worked, worked it all out. Lance were very clever. Um, but it still is the front front wheel drive car to drive, yeah. you know, the front wheel drive. This car, the other feature of this car is it has a five speed box, which the other cars were only four speeds. So Lancia, you know, developed a new gearbox for it, and away they went. Um, another, there are lots of little features on this that are quite different to other cars. One of them, apart from the engine tune, is that it has a set of 45 Dell Auto carburetors. And a lot of people said they never came with these, these carburetors, but the lady, in her letter to the current owner, said it wasn't running very well, so he had to take it to the Dell Auto factory to have the carburetors tuned, which they did, and she said it ran really well after that. And is that something you've had to do again? Oh, yeah, well, the engine's been completely rebuilt, and it's just had the uh, cams run in, so in the next step it'll go on the dyno and be properly run in and in tune. Uh, in the meantime, we wanted to get everything else fixed and, and wiring and so forth finished, mm -hmm. which is done now. And yeah. the last thing will be the wheels or new tyres, but we'll use what we've got at the moment. Yeah. And what sort of usage are you expecting this one? To oh, well, it'll be interesting. Again, uh, the owner has, uh, this is his first Italian car. He, he's actually a Porsche owner. So he's sort of jumped the fence. Um, he's pretty excited about that. I, I think that again, it'll be limited use. Yeah, I think it'll be a case if he likes it, he'll, he'll use it a lot. And I think he will. Yeah, wow. They're that's, cheeky. Yes, they're cheeky beautiful things. Cars, they're beautiful cars. And very lightweight. You know, yeah. this car, probably only 900 kilos, yeah. round about. Tell us a little bit about your business here. Well, David, this business um, started many, many years ago. Um, I. Um, retired from corporate life and was always interested in cars and thought, well, I needed, needed something to do and started a small restoration business that just grew. And as you see, we've got a variety of cars. So anything from O to the 70s we're interested in, particularly European cars. So on my right-hand side, we've got a small machine shop and we're capable of making the parts that we need anything from just small components, bushes, right up to if we have to, crankshafts and gearbox components. We've got over there a, a Bentley four and a half litre gearbox, which we've, we've essentially made all the new gears for, um, using our subcontractors and our own machining. So, you know, there's, we like a challenge. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing we can't really tackle. So cars that we've currently got in here, as you, you'll see, we've got a variety. We're just passing a couple of uh, Fiat, these are 1924 Fiat 501s. One car has been restored many years ago and it's being used as a pattern to restore this car over here. And this particular car here is, um, is, is pretty unique in that it's been owned from new by the same family. So they want us to restore it back to um, when it was first purchased and we'll do that over a period of 12 months. Mechanics, body, repaint, reupholster, and um, it'll be like new again. So that's the Fiat. Um, yeah, look, we'll continue the Italian theme over here. So, um, well, another British car, but it's red, which is unusual. Here we go. And that's because it spent most of its life in Italy. But this is, this is a Lola. 290, um, uh, 1972, powered by a Chevy Cosworth engine. Okay. And lurching behind it is a uh, Lancia Flavia Sport. This is Zagato. just, uh, yeah, and those rear side window takes a lot of people by surprise, I'd imagine. Yeah, and I mean, it's a love-hate um, shape for a lot of people. They're very limited production, made in the mid-60s. This car was made in 65. Um, I think they made, uh, depends which book you read, but around about uh, 550 cars. Uh, and again, 
no one really knows, but there were 30 right-hand drive cars. So this is one of the 30 right-hand drive cars. And uh, all aluminium body. And again, it has some very special features. The car <coughs> was imported from the UK in 95, put in a garage. In that state, do you reckon? I think it, was, I think it suffered from a bit of heat. You right. can see in the paint, and it, it's completely original. The interior—it's complete, hasn't has it been with, molested. Did it come with uh, British rust? Oh, probably, probably there'll be a bit there. Yeah. There always is somewhere. Yeah. I lurking. Say, yeah, it's lurking. <laughs> it was in a, 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 a one of those steel type garages, so yeah. it probably got hot here. Um, so what's the, what's the plan? Well, the plan with this car can go one of two ways. It can be got going again as it is so basically as a barn find car or it could be completely restored i would be leaning towards <clears throat> maintaining the patina uh, and mechanically restoring it and getting it going because when you have a good look <clears throat> internally um, it, it's very it's it's good it hasn't been molested and it's unusual for that sort of car you know got a black eye but that's nothing it's just <laughs> It's got a broken lens. And but, when uh, did you know, your appreciation of the patina and you know keeping it uh, this original? That, is it? Is that always been there? Well, look, I, I think it, it it has to a certain extent. But the thing to remember is that once you restore a car, it's not original. It's only original once. So there, there's a big push for people that have got low mileage, one owner type cars to keep them in, the, in, that, in that condition. And they're sought after. You know, they really are sought after from that point of view. But that change in philosophy is only, what, the last 15 years or so, would you say? Look, I think it's, it's, it's been there, but it's never been, it's never been included in shows. So, for instance, because that's sort of the top of the tree, they have a category for cars that have never been restored. And it's fantastic to see what turns up. And, um, you know, you see, uh, well, the year that I was there, for instance, there was a 250 short wheelbase Ferrari there that hadn't been restored and had been sold new in Melbourne that still had the, the sticker. And that's a 1965 car. It still had the, you know, the, the WH sticker. Low, who were the distributors in Melbourne for Ferrari, sticker on the back window. That's it for this time from Historic and Vintage Restorations. If you love this video, you're going to absolutely love this one. So click on the screen and watch that. And I'll see you in the next video.